Uh, how did government intervention eventually led to the 1929 market crash? Was that your question? Yeah, that was my question. How did, the, how did the government intervention lead to the 1929 crash and to ultimately to the Great Depression? Uh, you know, let me start by saying that I'm certainly not an expert on this, uh, but I can give you a few highlights. Um, the first catastrophic thing uh, that led to the Great Depression was the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1914. Um, in other words, the establishment of a central bank that determined monetary policy for the entire country. So that anything it did didn't have just a regional impact, like if you had regional banks printing money, like there was before 1914. All money was backed by gold. Gold held by banks in their bank vaults, and they distributed money only based on their reserves of gold. Uh, and if a bank did a lousy job of printing money or, or did a lousy business, had a lousy business plan, it created business disruptions within its region or within its small area, but that was it. The Federal Reserve now, create, every time it made a mistake, it had national repercussions. It influenced the entire economy because it was the only source of money. Um, in my view, what happened during the 1920s was the, the Federal Reserve printed too much money. It printed more money than its gold reserves justified, uh, causing an enormous misallocation of capital throughout the economy. Uh, so the economy grew, but it grew in an inefficient, ineffective way. And as a consequence, when, uh, when the Federal Reserve started restricting the money supply again by raising interest rates and restricting money supply in late 1929, and because of these misallocations of capital, the stock market, in an attempt to correct for the new interest rate environment and for these misallocation of capital, declined, which was a natural decline. Nothing would have happened, except that everybody in government responded in the worst way possible. Um, the Federal Reserve clamped down on the money supply even further, restricting all liquidity in the markets, printing almost no money, and actually sucking money out of the economy. Um, and immediately afterwards, uh, the smoot Holly, I think it's called, bill, uh, restricted trade. So as a consequence of raising tariffs in the United States, countries all over the world raised tariffs, international trade collapsed. We talk about globalization today. Real globalization happened in the 19th century and early 20th century. That, you know, there was real free trade going on. In 1929, that was destroyed. So it destroyed industry in the United States, both importers and exporters were devastated. So that, that started things rolling in a bad direction. And then there were just a series, I don't remember the, the, the details, but a series of regulations Hoover passed that were just devastating for the economy. And then he had elections in 1932. And rumors were that as soon as uh, Roosevelt would be elected, uh, he would um, basically confiscate Americans' gold. That the first thing he would do was take all our gold from, you know, for, from our bank accounts and put it, because up to that point you could still hold gold in the bank. Uh, private banks still held gold. And the idea was he was going to take it all and give it to the Federal Reserve and ban gold. So there was panic. And people went to the bank and took their gold out and, and the idea was we'll hide it and Roosevelt won't be able to get at it if he gets elected. So there was massive runs on banks, so banks collapsed, and if you, you, can, you can actually track rumors about Roosevelt nationalizing the gold supply and bank runs. And they track, during 1932, they track almost one-to-one. -one. Um, so the banks collapsing. And the banks, there was a lot of restructuring going on in banks anyway because of the Federal Reserve, so there was a lot of collapsing in banks through the 20s and 30s anyway. And then, of course, Roosevelt comes into uh, power, and what does he do? He nationalizes the gold supply. He does exactly what everybody thought he would do. He steals everybody's gold. He, he collapses it all into the gold. He makes it illegal for Americans to hold gold. So he, go, gold. so he goes after people's gold reserves at home as well. Now, what does gold taking out of the banks and putting in your basement do? It takes money out of circulation. So businesses don't have those funds. Banks can't lend money because the gold is in my, under my mattress instead of in the banking system, being lent, money being lent out. So that makes everything worse in terms of depression. And then Roosevelt, you know, it, it doesn't end the, the, the ridiculous things that he does. 
You know, this is considered one of the great presidents of, of, of ever in American history. And, and yet, when he took over government in 1932, unemployment was about 15%. And in 1939, when World War II started, unemployment was about 18%. And the only way unemployment went down in 1930, you know, in 1941, is because we shipped half the male population overseas to fight a war. So yeah, unemployment went down, big deal. I mean, he didn't, do, he didn't do anything, and he did enormous damage to the U.S. economy long term. Uh, he, the first thing he did, one of the first things he did was double income tax. Right? So you take, suck more money out of the private economy. You know, build dams in the middle of nowhere. So that's why we had a Great Depression. Everything that was done during the 1930s made it deeper and worse. It's only the policies of actually Truman, right after World War II, that started the economy back on track by basically going back on a pseudo semi-gold standard with, um, I forget the name, but Bretton Woods. Bretton Woods, that's right, Bretton Woods in 1945.